I guess one of the things that I wanted to ask you about what we just spoke about before with regards to Spencer Lynn News incident, when you're working with, say, corporate um, businesses or professionals, say, in HR or um, finance, whatever it may be, their profession is a lot more, I guess you'd be able to say, the decisions they're making are a lot more calculated. Um, they take the time to plan what they're going to say, how they're going to respond via email and so forth versus someone in Spencer's instance where he's full of adrenaline, sweating, his heart's pounding a million miles an hour. It's the first, first round of the year. I imagine you'd say it's a lot more likely for someone in that instance to say mm. something out of the heat of the moment that they don't mean. Mm. What would be your messaging to a professional athlete in that sense versus mm. someone who may be working in, in business or um, corporate environments? The common denominator is human behavior. And if you're practicing that, and even if it's at training, you ribbon somebody, ah, hey, you drop the ball, bro, look <laughs> into your hair. It's too, you know, too much gel in the hair, brother, or whatever it is, it's going to roll onto another space. So if you don't have respect in this space, you won't have respect in this space. If you don't have discipline in this space, it won't be in this place, which means like it's the same thing, making my bed every morning. People are like, Morgan, why do you make your bed? Who cares? No one sees it. And it, I could think that, right? But if I don't have discipline here, what about the discipline in my relationship? It usually rolls over into the next space that you step into. What about discipline towards my own health, life, partnerships, relationships, boundaries within myself? And now I've got a, an environment that's toxic. And who wants toxic? You want toxic? So we've got to be, um, and whether it's Spencer or whether it's a corporate, how you practice it, anything is how you do everything. And that means that if you're practicing it over here, when someone says something to, yeah, I want to give them an uppercut to the moon, just like Spencer might have thought in that moment. But at the same time, I'm able to say, uh, you know, I can say it in my head, uh, F this bloke or whatever it is that I'm saying in my head, but no one knows. And I'm, yeah, you know, I'm pushing back on the mark and I'm getting ready for the next hit up or whatever it is or I'm in this corporate space and I'm making sure that I respond in a, because sometimes some people send them an email and I'm like, what the F did you just write? And I want to write back and say, you F an idiot and all of the above, right? True story. We all do. Um, But then I'm like, how can I put it in this, in a way, pause for a moment, slow it down. And it's the patience being, do I have patience in one space? If I do, I'm able to put, practice it in a space, even on a sporting field where someone comes across and kicks my leg or whatever it is, or, you know, does something that I'm not happy with. And I want to jump up and say, are you effing joking? I jump up and I'm like, oh, just, and I just walk off in the opposite direction. And I'll leave it with the referee. And if it was bad enough, you send him off. If it's in the corporate space, they'll have a word to him. And if they're not going to have a word to him, how can I put it? And I would call it seeking to understand in their language. Because if you don't put it in their language, they'll never understand it. And guess what? They're going to repeat on the next process. The same thing. So even with men, I'll give you a great example. Domestic violence is huge. And most people don't want to work with... When we talk about domestic violence, we talk about victim protection and all of the above, which I'm with and I agree with everybody on that. So let me be clear about that. But on the other side, we've got the perpetrator. And I know in jail, people don't do anything with the perpetrator, right? Just so you know that. They don't have to do a course, conflict resolution, anger management, violence prevention. Those courses are available in jail, but they don't have to. They're not compulsory. Um, my biggest thing to everybody out there that understand this, I work with those men. And the reason why I do it, because we talk about leadership, Leadership is about building better humans. Better humans means that we're able to seek or we seek to understand why that person is acting from that space and where that program comes from. So that normal program in this three prefrontal, uh, prefrontal cortex is one that they've seen before or been taught before or think that it's normal within the community. I was one of those kids growing up in Redfern. Violence was our first response. And over time, I said, wait a second, is violence really serving me? And then showing this to men, we've able to, you know, we've got people who have been 
repeat offenders around domestic violence to actually say, hey, wait a second, my first choice is going to be I'm going to walk away and now I'm going to call Hayden. Hey, Hayden, I'm not feeling good. I've had this with my partner. And then be able to share with them, have you ever thought about it like this? What about what's the actions that you're taking to cause that um, action where you then react to the response that they've come out with? And once we do that, we see men who are, you know, their first response is violence and, and then that's not a good response. Um, and the biggest outcome, so everyone that watches this doesn't switch off and, and say, oh, I left this bloke. Understand this, that person now goes back into the community and it could be your sister, mother, auntie, daughter, um, niece that has a better response from that individual because they will, they'll move from this person to this person, right? They'll go from this person, they were domestic violence here, we've built, built them better, they moved on to here. And now when they're in that space, it could be your sister, Instead of something bad happening and ending someone's life, possibly, now we've got a response where that man says, actually, I respect my partner and I'm listening and I'm learning. What did I do to upset you? How could I respond better? How could I help this situation? And that is that is leadership at its highest degree. And once we understand that, seeking to understand how people are built, we can shift mental health, we can shift domestic violence, we can shift youth justice. And that's a whole different scenario and ball game. But most people won't do it because we look at the perpetrator like they're a piece of whatever. And I understand the conversation, I do. But if we don't reprogram that, they go back out and maybe they meet your sister and your sister isn't on this planet. And it's happened many a time. And I'm going to step in that space and start to create leaders by making better choices through an education they never got, role modeling they never saw. And um, you can't be what you can't see. So let's let's get out of judgment, seek to understand more, and we'll create a better world and space. And as I said, going back to that whole Spencer Lenu conversation, how you build yourself from the education knowledge application, being held accountable to that. Um, is a process journey, different journey for, for the whole world, a better world.